Hello my dudes, my name is Tiffany. Welcome back to my series, Internet Analysis, where I like to research and discuss various topics loosely relevant to social media or media in general. Today, I wanna to talk about education. More specifically, I watched a video this week that was about parents who send their kids to expensive, low-tech or tech-free schools. And that brought up a lot of questions, like how much tech is good to have in schools? How does screen time affect young people? So many questions. But before I get started, first of all, I wanna say this setup is obviously different than usual. I am visiting camp and I don't have my lights and the natural light is gonna mess with me. So we're just gonna have to deal with it. Also really quickly, I wanna give a shout out to Pill Club. In case you haven't heard of them, they're basically a birth control delivery service. So I paid my very own money to try them out because I've been interested for a while. And I was actually able to get my birth control for a third of the cost that I used to pay at my local pharmacy, so that was sick. But I was paid by them to create a video for their channel. They're making this series that's called Speak Up, and they want women to share their stories about sexual and reproductive health. So I do have my video on there. If you guys wanna check it out, click the link in the description. All right, that's enough of an intro. Let's watch a little bit of this video that I'm referring to, which by the way is called Inside a Tech-Free School, where tech executives send their kids. In most public and private schools across the nation, Chromebooks, iPads, or Windows devices are everywhere. But things look very different at the private Sacramento Waldorf School in California, where technology isn't used at all through eighth grade and is scarce even in high school. So the video is pretty interesting, but I was more interested by the reactions in the comments. I kind of felt like a lot of people weren't really getting the point of the video, but also some of these comments are clearly jokes. In America, tech-free school, in developing countries, just school. I grew up like this and now it costs $35,000. Rich people spending too much money to experience being poor. Ah, classic. So as that clip mentioned, these schools are actually part of the Waldorf system. So it's not just about them being low tech or tech free. The Waldorf system is like an international schooling system that all kind of has the same philosophy about education. I live in the US, so I can't really speak to anywhere else, but their style of teaching and their curriculum seems to be very different than what is usually taught in public schools in the US. The screen policy differs at each Waldorf school, but it's known for its holistic instructional style, which promotes artistic expression, experiential learning, and yes, limited technology use. So for the sake of comparison, I'm gonna be comparing these Waldorf schools to the typical American public school. And of course, I'm going off my own experiences, which may not necessarily reflect all American public schools, but hopefully I get it kind of close. So in this video, I wanted to address two main issues. The first would be tech in schools, and the second, curriculum. The Waldorf schools have a more holistic learning style rather than the harsh standardization that is present in most American public schools. Here's a snippet from one of their websites. Waldorf education is founded upon an understanding of each child as a unique individual who seeks to learn and grow by experiencing the path of earthly life. Now that does not sound like American public school. Anyway, this video got a little bit too long just focusing on tech in schools. So if you guys would like, let me know and I'll make a video all about standardization in public schools and kind of compare that to this Waldorf holistic education. So now we can really get into the issue of tech in schools. It wasn't too long ago that we were all hearing how schools that didn't have enough tech were disadvantaged. Okay, so low tech public schools probably are disadvantaged because their lack of tech is not by choice, but most likely a lack of funding. Access to tech, especially in public schools, is hugely important. Nearly three million students don't have access to a computer or internet at home, so that makes it really difficult for them to complete their assignments. For those students, they would really need to rely on their school's library or computer lab or even public libraries. So when it comes to schools or districts that have high levels of poverty, they are very underfunded. They are lacking in resources all over the place, not just in tech, but even just basic textbooks can be really hard to come by or basic classroom supplies. It's a huge topic. But specifically with tech, many of these underfunded schools, if they're lucky enough to have any computers, often don't have a good enough ratio, so there are so few computers to go around for so many students, or if they have a good number of computers, they may be really old, outdated, some of them might be broken, so they're still not completely useful to the students. But in well-funded public schools, tech is on the rise. 
You've got high-tech computer labs, laptops in classrooms for kids to use, iPads. I've seen huge disparities where I've gone into classrooms in urban districts and the paint is peeling and there's not a computer in sight to very high-end districts where every kid has an iPad they can bring home. So this situation is commonly referred to as the digital divide and I think there are two types of digital divide. The first type of digital divide would just be access to tech. So do these schools have computers or the tech resources that their students need? Do the students themselves have access to tech at home? The digital divide was about access to technology, and now that everyone has access, the new digital divide is limiting access to technology. So of course that quote assumes that everyone has access to tech, which I just mentioned is not true. Not every student, school, or household has access to a computer or internet, but it is assumed that everyone does. Internet access is such a necessity in modern life that it's almost impossible to get on without it. So access to tech is imperative, but now ironically we have the problem of too much screen time, too much technology, so now it's a privilege to have less screen time. It could happen that the children of poorer and middle class parents will be raised by screens, while the children of Silicon Valley's elite will be going back to wooden toys and the luxury of human interaction. And this brings us to the next part of the video, which is all about screen time. So referring back to that original video that I'm kind of responding to, the whole irony of that was that these parents, a lot of them work in or are very closely associated with the tech industry in Silicon Valley. These techie parents are sending their kids to tech-free schools. So the school featured is in Sacramento, and I'm not sure if that's technically considered part of Silicon Valley, but regardless, Waldorf schools are very popular in that region. Speaking of tech parents, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs were notorious for limiting their own kids' access to tech and screen time. I saw a lot of comments on this video such as this. Crack dealers don't give the drug to their kids? Shocking. Obviously, it is very telling when the CEO or creator of something doesn't use that something in their own home. But it's not just that. Tech companies like Apple have a huge financial interest in technology in schools. They're actively promoting, you know, iPads for kids or other types of devices. And it's making them a lot of money. Tech in schools is big business, expected to hit 43 billion this year, with 46% of that growth happening in K through 12. So yes, of course, big tech companies will promote and sell their devices to schools and profit from that. All the while, the employees are trying to get those devices away from their own kids. But also it could be said that tech usage in school would be different and probably not quite as harmful as home screen time, but again, if you're on screens all day at school and then you're on screens when you get home, what should we do? Of course tech companies are fully aware of the dangers of tech and social media. They created them, they designed them to get people addicted. Anyway, let's quickly look at some screen time statistics and recommendations. The World Health Organization says limited or no screen time for children under five. Too much screen time can have lasting consequences for young children's brains. What too much screen time leads to is a variety of missed opportunities for learning and development. And with older kids, a 2010 study by the Kaiser Family Foundation found that 8 to 18 year old children devote an average of 7 hours and 38 minutes to entertainment media each day. So obviously I'm sure we are all well aware that there are so many potential downsides to too much screen time, which by the way, I myself am very guilty of. It is a struggle, especially working as a YouTuber. It's very hard to distance myself from my phone or my laptop or social media. But one of the biggest issues is that the more time that you spend on a screen, the less time you have to devote to more positive activities like physical activity or reading a book or literally doing anything other than just sitting in front of a screen. I say to you as you watch my video on a screen, by the way, if you're enjoying this video, give me a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell. I, I see the irony in the content that I make, okay? I'm just here to talk about it. Screen time is highly discouraged at home too. The Lower School Parent Handbook recommends no media at home through fifth grade and limited access accompanied by clearly defined family policies and monitoring for older children, stating none is the optimal condition for young children and less is better than more. The thing is, it is a privilege to be able to cut down on screen time. You know, sometimes people will criticize lower income people for having a smartphone because it's a so-called luxury item, but in reality, 
smartphones are like essential to modern life. Especially if you don't have access to a computer or internet at home, if you have your smartphone, that is everything. That is your only computer. So it's necessary, it's not a luxury. There's an interesting thing that's happening and that it's become a real sign of kind of status and privilege to be tech free. But children from low income families spend about three more hours on average on screens per day. And also many parents these days rely on screens to distract, calm or entertain their kids. You know, we've all seen it. Play with the iPad, here, take my phone, watch TV. If a parent needs, you know, 30 minutes or an hour to get something done, sometimes it is necessary to just distract a kid, keep them entertained for a bit, and I do not think that that makes you a bad parent. But sometimes it's also an issue of not being able to afford childcare. Quality childcare that can keep your kid doing some productive, stimulating, positive activity is expensive, and many, many parents really struggle to be able to pay for that. So if you can't afford that kind of childcare, or you can't afford enough of it, you do the best you can, and yeah, that means probably more screen time for your kids. And on the other side of things, wealthier people can afford childcare, and they can afford the best damn childcare out there. I used to work as a nanny or babysitter very often, so I would always be scouring care.com for ads. And so many parents these days ask for nannies or babysitters that can teach their kids something, you know, a new language or a skill, maybe a musical instrument, or at the least spend their time maybe doing arts and crafts. Because again, people don't wanna pay you to just sit in front of the TV with their kid, if they're gonna pay you for childcare and they can get something extra out of it, keep their kid, you know, positively, mentally stimulated, then they're gonna do that. Wealthier parents also put their kids into extracurriculars, which means they get to practice or learn other skills or play sports, which again, is way less time that they could spend looking at a screen. It's all about money, isn't it? Always. You don't necessarily have to be a wealthy parent to be able to put your kids in extracurriculars, but usually they are pretty cost prohibitive, whether it's the actual cost of the activity or necessary equipment or even just the ability to take your kids to practice regularly. Once again, it takes a huge amount of money, time, and privilege to be able to limit your child's screen time. Anyway, here's a quick little tangent. Some commenters seem to think that this low-tech lifestyle would actually be bad for these Waldorf students. What are they gonna do in college when they use laptops for everything? Got them. Honestly, these kids are super disadvantaged now when it comes to jobs in the IT tech sector. And I just think it is so silly to suggest that these kids will be lacking in skills or experience with tech. They know what tech is. It's not like they're completely unfamiliar with it. I'm sure that they use it. We don't have that many screens here, but I can still use a screen really well. You don't have to be on the screen all the time to know how to use it well. When these kids use tech, there is a reason for it, or if they're using it for fun, it's for a very short amount of time, as opposed to the rest of us whose default is screen usage. I think it would be really hard to argue that limiting screen time isn't beneficial. I think it pretty clearly is a good thing for almost anybody. And also I don't think that passively spending many hours a day using screens is necessarily teaching you any skills. Anyway, the point that has to be repeated over and over and over is that clearly there are pros and cons to technology, using technology devices, social media, but I think we can all agree that it's important to use it consciously and responsibly and with intent. But anyway, back to that main comment, assuming that these kids won't be able to work in tech. I just don't think that these kids, these wealthy kids, are gonna have any problem when it comes to college. If you have parents who can afford to pay twenty to $35,000 per year in tuition all the way through your education, I am sure that your parents can afford to get you a private tutor in any subject that you need. And if you really do show an interest in tech or coding or computer science or anything like that, I'm sure they will do their best to get the best possible resources for you. Money is the anthem of success. If you're lucky enough to be born into a family with that kind of privilege and resources, you're gonna have a lot of different learning opportunities. We know within privileged families, those learning experiences are deep and vast and constantly coming in. So next, what about the impacts of tech usage on mental health? You know, are we all actually addicted to tech on our phones and social media? Yes, the answer is yes. How does that impact us? How does that impact our social skills? I can definitely say I am not my best self after I've had hours and hours of mindless screen time. I literally turn into a zombie. It's horrific. 
But I'm sure we've all heard the many reports that suggest the numerous negative effects of too much screen time. The latest one was trending on Twitter the other day, suggesting that we're growing horns in the back of our heads, like extra bone because our heads are always down like this looking at our phones. And I feel like that's been debunked, but even if I did grow a horn on the back of my head, so be it. You think I'm gonna give up my phone just because of a little piece of bone in the back of my head? I don't know. Certainly ruins our posture. I have no strength in my back. There's a huge impact of cell phones and social media platforms like Instagram and Snapchat and other platforms on kids' brains and on their social and emotional development. There's also links to addictive compulsive behavior, uh, to attention distraction issues. Teen depression, anxiety, and suicide are also on the rise. At the generational level, studies show that kids today spend less time hanging out with their friends than they used to. Is technology to blame for everything from depression and anxiety to attention deficit disorders? Some people seem to think so, but others claim that correlation does not equal causation. That correlation often disappears if you control for other factors in their life. Basically, she says it's more likely that unhappiness is leading to unhealthy device usage rather than the other way around. Anyway, to finish this video, I hope you guys thought it was interesting, but even more important than the whole tech issue of this, a parent's top reason to send their kid to a school like a Waldorf school is not just because it's low tech or tech free, though I'm sure that that is a benefit. What I got from that video was just the privilege of going to a holistic school like a Waldorf school where you're not completely confined just to memorize, take a test, do standardized testing like many of us in public school are. What a privilege to go to a school with so many resources and so many cool electives and, and different experiences to have. Like they had gardening, they had a full ass farm at their school. Patty the cow, and we have a whole bunch of chickens and a few ducks and a small flock of sheep. But anyway, again, if you guys wanna hear all about that comparison, let me know and I'll make a video about that because I got a lot to say. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about this whole issue. Let me know your experiences. Did your schools or do your schools have a lot of tech or a little tech? Tons of resources, lack of resources. Let me know. And also what you think about screen time for kids. Just give me all of your opinions. Thank you. All right, thank you guys so much for watching and you guys can follow me on Instagram for some mediocre pics and stay tuned for a future internet analysis video. Okay, thanks, bye.